And that Monday morning, and uh, Bob Williams was right there next to him, to my next job, uh, working next to me. Well, I said, Bob, I said, did you hear anything about a strike coming out about 10 o'clock this morning? We're going to close her down. I said, ask for more money. He said, no. I said, well, pass it on. I said, see, at 10 o'clock come, there was four looms running over there, one girl, one girl named Cox. Uh, Left the looms are running and walked out. And I thought I went by and knocked the looms off so they wouldn't make a smash and make a smash there and tear the wiggy, the, the, the cloth up was all I didn't move on it. And um, uh, we had a hall over there, rented a hall on Western Avenue over there and met down there the next day on Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. It cost us $2 for rent, but we had to clean it up and uh, and after we got through with it, and we did clean it up and done a nice job. Uh, my, my, my experience with the union is uh, uh, we've done a little better work. I always said we'd do a little better work and a little more work and better work in an open shop. That's what was my motto there. Well, uh, we, you know, we had a treasure down there, about a five or $600 in treasure, and the guy thought, well, now let's take off. He was from Alabama. We didn't try to try to chase him down or anything, but that done away with the funds. We had the same thing out in over Brookside Cotton Mill in 1921. There, a fellow there ran off with the money over there. Well, the railroad come up and help us out there. I was working as had to half a day and going to school half a day. They holler about minority, minority. I'm minority, and I'm just one in the. Two hundred and something million people. There ain't nobody else in the world like me. I'm a minority. I'm not belly aching. I'm appreciate the United States. I'm born free, and I'm a, I am a free man. I can get out here and I can cuss my president and call him anything I want to, and then I have to prove it. But if he can't prove it, then he's got a slander case against me. See, I can't slander nobody, but I can. I've got my own opinion about this place, the schools. Uh, she's a school he's over there. I guess she thinks different to what I think. They say she's one of the best teachers on up there in a the school. That's just what, the, what they say. I guess she'd made teachers of Air County up there if it hadn't been politics. But politics goes with the, with the ball game. If you understand what I'm talking about, when you got a ball game of going politics, and I worked a lot of politics there. I'm a full-blooded Republican, I am. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm a Republican. Lucy is a Democrat. That's the difference in it. We've got two opinions there. I'm a, I'm a conservative, what I am. I believe in taking care of other people's stuff the same as my stuff. If I get out there and destroy somebody else's stuff, I'm a destroying my stuff. I'm a doing away with two different two different things there, you see. Let's talk about, let's yeah. talk about the, 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 the union. You want to talk about the union. Well, I got nineteen. Uh, 19 and 30, 33 it was, yeah. July 33. No, it was 19. When you went from 11 hours to 8 hours. It was 1934. 1934 when we pulled that strike. Roosevelt was in there and he called a nationwide strike. They did. Gorman did out of some place up there. Gorman. He called a nationwide strike. Roosevelt said put him back to work and that without discrimination. Well, I never did go back to work down there. That was the day I worked this discrimination against me. It wasn't what the papers wrote on because they didn't listen to him. Well, yeah. Yeah, 1933, 1933, we pulled a strike down there. But 1934 is when we come out of there, and I stayed out and landed at Mooresville, North Carolina over there. I tried to organize over there, and it wasn't organized over at Mooresville. No. I, I, I believe in the union. I believe 100% in the union. And I was in the, uh, in the building trade union, the carpenters union, when, when I began to contract. And right after the war, I began to contract. And I uh, bought this place down here, built that house up there, and raised the family up there. This girl here, she's married, and and, and she, was, she was born while we were living up there. Um, yeah. 1933. Uh, 1933. 1933. Did you sweep part of the beginning of the organization at, at, at Cherokee? Uh, yeah. Did you help organize in 33? 
did I do what? Did you help organize the union in 1933? 1933 when we organized the union down Tell there. Tell me about how you organized yeah, the union. Yeah, and we, we signed up there, and the union men come in there, and we signed up down there at that hall, 1933. And we, we, we had a union there, and we had a pretty strong job there. 17, yeah, but the local, so, well, your local uh, was 1758, they was, right? Yeah, uh, they moved into Sevier County in 1958, and they, the boys was down there at uh, Doug, uh, um, what's the name, he just lost, uh, lost a big farm up there at Cherokee, uh -huh. Doug Hanson. Doug Hanson up there, me and another guy had some lots up there, and he goes down there and he puts a, 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 a house right on my driveway down there to where I couldn't get in on the public road. Uh, yeah, there. well, now that's the kind of people that you deal with when you're dealing with a textile bunch there. They don't care nothing about nobody. It's just a sweatshop, what it is. It's absolutely a sweatshop. Okay, let's talk about yeah. that. What were the conditions like in the mill that made everybody want to organize the union? Yeah, every, 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 everyone, we, everyone was down there was, was signed up for the union. We was 96 percent, what you might say, 100 percent there. We had a few in there that was little on the other side there. But uh, they was pretty good, pretty good guys. What were your work yeah, conditions? yeah. But uh, what what happened there? They, they, they I helped link the constable down there. I thought I blame a knot down there, and he went in there and and and, and uh, was a guard down there, and he was elected officer there, constable at that time, and his boy and he, he was a pretty good friend of mine after that. I would forgive anybody uh, things they did to me because I just felt that way. Okay. Uh, well, why were you yeah. blacklisted? Uh, do what? Why were you blacklisted? Why was I blacklisted? Right. Oh, I was blacklisted down there on the counter just pulling one guy out of a car and then I told the cop that was going to arrest me for it. I said he started to jump out on top of me. I don't know why. But I think that's the reason why they blacklisted me. And I was one of the leaders down there. I'd, I'd always have led off on anything that I went to. I always, when, I, when I was in the carpenter's local, I led off on all of my jobs there. And uh, they, they looked for me for a leader. But you see some of my work around here. It, 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 it's a little crappy in a way, but it's, it's got some of my concrete finishing out there. And I'm a pretty good stonemason, too. And, and brick work and... and uh, uh, that's some um, uh, carpenter work, carpenter work for a good long time. I worked down Milton down there. I worked all over the stadium down there on that uh, first part of the stadium on the uh, east stand down there, raising it on concrete work. Was this union that you were in at Cherokee, yeah. was that the first yeah. union that yeah, you belonged was, to? That, uh, that was a second union, second textile union, 1921. When I was 14 years old, I joined over at Brookside Cotton Mill. Really? Yeah, in the textile union over there. We come out on a strike over there in 1921, and about six months after I started to work over there. Tell me about that union. Uh, well, that, that union over there didn't last too long. It, it was it piddled, piddled out there. By 2022, it was, uh, it was forgot about. Well, I hadn't forgot about it. I went down to Cherokee, and I worked at Cherokee down there for a good long while. What did you do uh, in Cherokee? I was in the weave room down there. I was, uh, worked in the weave room down there. And uh, I worked in the spinning room. In fact, I could do any, most anything that was in that cotton mill down there. I, I worked over books out in the winding room. I was on the twisters over there where there's twist uh, the, for the big warps. Have you ever been in them where they usually uh, run the warps over there to, to go into the, to the weave room? That's a big, big spoon, white, big metal spoon, fits four inches, fits six inches wide. Well, anyway, anyway, I worked, worked there at Brookside on that, and then we got to making this here casket stuff over there in the weave room over there, what they call alpaca. It was uh, burlap coming through there with the uh, mushroom silk, what they call a mushroom cotton there. That crinkled up, and they could fold it backwards and forwards with that, and make a casket lining for it. They had a good thing over there, but we didn't have no uh, strong union over there. It, 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 uh, we had bad leaders, and you take bad, Brookside yeah, at Brookside. 
we had good leaders at Brooks at Cherokee, but we had some crooked guys down there was on, on the money side. We didn't investigate them, see what kind of people they was. Okay, before, yeah. let's get to the beginning of the union at Cherokee. Back, okay. back when, was, when the union, when we first started the union down there. Well, that was 1933 it was, 1933. Now, Lucille Thornburg was one of the leaders down there. She was in the paper, up, uh, editor of the paper over there, the Labor News. CLU, and uh, I'd taken the paper a long time there, and, and we went over there and met there in the hall while I was in the carpenter local. I was in the carpenter local there for a good long while, and uh, I, I, I just think, think the world of union, I do. I, but uh, it, it, it's a just, uh, the union is, uh, is, is a thing, it, it ought to be honorable. It ought to be honorable, not to, to uh, if a guy's in the union there, I don't want the union to hold up, to hold my job. I'm supposed to hold my job myself. I'm supposed to produce on, the, on, on uh, so much work to make the other guy some money. I want the other fellow to make some money too. And, 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 and uh, Oscar Dunn was a union man. He kept us going. Uh, uh, Oscar Dunn was, he's a contractor, big contractor, oh, okay. yeah. And he kept, he kept uh, uh, the union going here and give us a job uh, to, to keep the union going because he thought, that, he thought the world of the union he did. No. But he was a contractor and a contractor, he wasn't after all the money. He, he, was, he was sort of, uh, I'd say, a, a little bit liberal there. Now, I understand. Yeah. Uh, in a position there that you see that when the banks went, went busted, and, and we had a devil of depression there, we were making about seven, eight dollars a week down there, working three and four days a week. That's what we were working with. Fruit Peabody and our shirt company was taking the producing all the, all the cloth we could produce down there. And uh, Manhattan shirt company, Fruit Peabody and that, that bunch there, they made expensive uh, broadcloth down there. It's fine comb uh, a product it was, and uh, it was uh, put out there. But you know, they 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 failed to put a union label on it. That's that's what that's what messed me up altogether with them. They wouldn't put a union label on it, and so they would put a union label on it there, and it, and uh, comp made it compulsory with Manhattan Shirt Company and the Iron Shirt Company. They they would have been a lot better off. Uh, it wasn't only the courage, it was guts. Uh, what, what I call uh, just uh, uh, the, the, the thoughts of, uh, of getting in there uh, uh, or going against something or other, that we had so many odds against us there. We had oh. more odds against us than we had for us. What were the odds? Yeah, the odds was, uh, was we were in a position there and went so long in, in, on cheap wages, we didn't have no backbone left there, no no resources whatsoever there. Didn't have no resources at all. And when they took that little bit of money away, that guy down there in Alabama, a fellow by the name of Bill Bates, a little short guy. Of course, he, he went back down there, I guess, on a farm or catching catfish. They called him Shovel Bill, Shovel Bill and a catfish with the bill that long and a about that who was long. Bill Banks? Yeah. Uh, Bill, who was Bill Bates? Bill, Bill Bates, he was one of the, the, uh, the weavers down there. He worked in the weave room with us. Uh, he was a little short fellow. He was about middle-aged, maybe 45, 50 years old back then. They called him middle-aged down there. But he, he just decided he wanted that money, and he got it. And we didn't have no bonds. He wouldn't have been able to make a bond no way. Was he, was he uh, part of, was he a worker like you? He was from Yeah, he was Knoxville? working, working like, like, like I was right back there in the weave room with us and working on the... Was he an room. outside organizer that came uh, Yeah, he was an outsider come in there and got a job on the outside, you see, up from the outside. He was from Alabama down there. When did he come yeah, here? Uh, he, he come down in about uh, sometime in the spring of 1933. Yeah. Did, did Lucille say them, Did Lucille only say anything you about it? You never heard about him. You didn't hear, didn't hear about yeah. it. That well, I guess she wanted to forget about all that stuff. I, did I, I, he come I, here yeah. to organize? Did, did yeah. he come here to organize specifically? Yeah, she was. She was. Uh, she was down there. She helped us organize. She did. We had. We had a little place out there on uh, uh, what they call Clyde Street. There, little house rented there where we kept our groceries and things and. 
And uh, you had a little grocery uh, yeah, store for the yeah, union? Yeah, yeah. I had a little grocery store there and had donations made up. We'd get out and, and, and uh, hold some knitting mill out there. They was uh, organizing union out there and we'd go out there and sell them cards for 25 cents on paydays. We'd get five or ten dollars a piece there and take them down and buy groceries for them. They'd haul them around there in the little coaster wagon that's in so sack. Who were you giving uh, the groceries to? Do what? Who were you giving the groceries to? Yeah, this was the, the people that were on strike. Oh, uh, this was the people the on the strike. Yeah, that's that's what we what we had to live on. So I had kids. I was on, on that. My wife had died and everything, and uh, it, it, it was it was in pretty bad shape there. Uh, I was working in the spinning room there. And you, you started working at Cherokee yeah, in 1922. 20, and then I left there and went to Ohio and stayed in Ohio in 1927. And I come back here then and went to, back to Cherokee. I didn't go back to Brookside, I went to Cherokee Cotton Mill. Why did you leave Brookside in 21? Well, I, I wanted more money. I wanted to stretch out there and I guess I couldn't get a job back there in no way. Did you uh, get fired because you were in the union at Brookside? No, I didn't get fired down there because the union was broke before before I left there. They broke the union they had. They'd done the way they uh, they done the same thing. You see, see uh, people people back there in a dollar stuck out so so far in the face there and such a big thing a buck there was that uh, they take take off with just a dollar. A dollar was would roll out there. You don't know nothing about the pricing. You ought to, you ought to really went went through that pricing back there. It was something terrible, and uh, you had a lot of time on your hand there. You stop and you talk to people. You be, might be hungry, but you still stand and talk to them. And them on the front porch, you didn't know anything about air conditioning or anything like that. And uh, so you left Brookside Mill. And you went and got another job in Ohio? Yeah, yeah I went to left to Brookside and went to Ohio up there. Okay. Uh, they didn't want me to leave leave there to go to Ohio because I took too many with me. I took uh, t I took four or five dolphins away from there uh, up there with us. What did you do in Ohio? Uh, I worked at Mason Tar and Rubber Company in a textile mill there. That's where I got fired at up there. Why'd you get fired? I got fired for going to sleep on the commode. <laughs> I couldn't keep my eyes awake, right. and it was on two. It work? was on Monday night, and I'd been out all, all, all uh, on the weekend. Okay. And uh, it was on a Monday night when it was, and so he fired me. He come in there, and he said, "What the hell is wrong with you?" I said, "I'm getting the whole eyes open." I looked up at him, and I sat down on that commode there. I looked up at him, and I said, "I, I can't hold my." Okay. So uh, he, he fired me. I, I, I went up to the gate with him, and he can he can he can me. And I went to the construction work, and I helped on that Kent College up there where the shooting was up there at Murray. And then it you was, came back to Tennessee. Yeah, and I come back to Tennessee in 19 and 27. How old were you in 1927? How old was I? How old were you in 1927? How I, old were you? How old was I? I yes. said 20. I was 20. I was born in 1907. I'm 84 years old now. Lucille's about, uh, I guess she's about 80, 81 or two. 83. 83 years, yeah. Well, I, I figured she was getting pretty close to my age. Uh, You're 84. Yeah, I'm 84, yeah. See, there's they, they, a lot of old people that, that, that down there now. They've got, uh, they've got uh, a, a pretty good plan up there now. I don't know what they got, but... I'd like to go back to a cotton mill and look at a cotton mill, see what it looks like. Uh, I went back to Brookside over there in 1937, after my wife died, and uh, I went to work over there. I didn't have nobody to keep the kids, and I walked off over there one night, and I told him, I said, I quit. He said, what you quit for? I said, I have nobody at the house to take care of the kids, and I said, I can't leave them there. You ain't going to let me off, and I just quit. Uh, so I just walked off and left the job. I didn't know where I was going to go to work at or not, but I made my job. Okay, well, let's go back to, uh, you You came back to, to the mill in 27, uh, Yeah, right? from 27. Okay. And, what were the uh, conditions like in the mill in 1927? Conditions like uh, down to Terry Key, yeah. when I went back in there. I went to work in the, in, the, in, the, in the spinning room, back there in the spinning room. Now, I had an aunt working there. She was working there in 1928. 
27. And she was working on reels. You know what reels are? Yes. Well, they had the, these cones where they'd wind on the cones to go, go on, a, on these warps and um, put them on a big spool. But uh, she worked on them. She was the youngest, youngest one in my mother's family. She was a baby. And uh, she, she worked there and then worked at Brookside over there. And she worked down there some. But she was in the union over there and uh, at Brookside. And uh, from the time it started over there. And um, there was Kellys over there. There was people named the Kellys over there. They was in union too. They was, they was really union people. They believed in union. And um, they worked in it like I did. I, I, I worked it harder into, to get it organized than I did on my own job, to tell you the truth about it. I was out late at night uh, working. How, tell me about how, how hard you worked to organize Well, I'd go, I'd, I'd go in, and, uh, go in and, and, and just sit down on the porch and start talking to them about what we could do and what we, how, we, how we'd accumulate uh, a, a better job and a better working conditions. And what we had, we'd get eight hours instead of 10 or 12 hours. And uh, it, 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 I had a good selling point there. I had tell a good, me. yeah. Pretend that you're trying uh, to get me in the union. Yeah. What would you tell me? Yeah, I had, to, I had to explain everything to them, what the, what the so, so smaller cost to do was and stuff like that. I'd bring that around there. 25 cents a week. Well, you never miss 25 cents a week. You're going to make a dollar, two more, maybe three or four more dollars a week. If you go in the union, we got something to bargain with. If we could take the whole body in there, and we got the whole body, then we got the whole union there, and then we got something to bargain with. You, if you haven't got no force, you can't bargain. Now, the weaker you are, the, the, the less bargain you get. The stronger you are, the better, better uh, uh, deals you'll get. What, were people uh, frightened to join, or were they, did they want to join? Well, they, 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 they was uh, uh, disappointed. They were disappointed all together on the on the setup, on the slowness of getting money. So they they wanted to see you got a forty percent cut down there at one whack, and uh, they sold two hundred thousand dollars out of that mill down there. That's and what they come and told us. Yeah, they told us they sold two hundred thousand dollars, and then in cash money. I don't know how they got got that, but you talk two hundred thousand dollars, a lot of money back then. That oh. That's about uh, old four or five million dollars today, but uh, they they tell us this, that, and the other, and uh, we we believe half of it. Why uh, did they tell you this? Well, they said when they got them, they, to, when they recovered the two hundred thousand dollars, they said put it right back to us. It belonged to us. That was Mibbins talking. That wasn't Hanson and all. That was Mibbins talking. Was that talking. in 1933? Yeah. Mibbins was doing the talking out there. He, he promised us that. Well, we took a 10% raise there, and then a 10% in two weeks. We got 10% more. I, 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 I was for that 10%, and they was holding for 20%. I said, you be 10%, would take 10%, and then you get a little more raise there on that 10% there, you're getting 10% on that. Uh, okay. And what, you, what yeah. does this have to do? Uh, how does this relate to the, the organization of the union? Do what? Um, how does the, this $200,000 relate to you organizing the union? Well, no, what they've done, some some of the officials sold that much money out of there, you see, out of, out from Cherokee, out of, out of the plant down there. And uh, they said that's the reason why they had to cut our wages 40%. Oh. And they did cut our wages 40%. Are you working there? Yeah. So this was the the was this the owner's excuse why he was couldn't give you a raise and why they had a good Well, yeah, that was the excuse. That was the excuse there. That they couldn't. Was this happening? Yeah, did if, did she tell you about that? Did no, Lucille? No. That she didn't mention that. No. Well, she knew about it. She she, she heard the heard the man talk out on the step. He come out on the step there and he made the speech. He said, "We'll give you the money." Said we'll give you the money. Said when we recover the money, said we'll put it right back in your pay envelope. Was this his way of saying, I don't want? Is it, was this? Was, did he do this while you were? Did a lot of people believe the owner? 
Yeah, there was. Well, we had about we had about five or six hundred people working down there day and night. It wasn't as large as Brookside. Brookside Mill had around two thousand working over there day and day and night when they were running two shifts over there. And the uh, uh, standard knit mill out there, they they tried to try to union out there, but they never did get it working. And uh, they paid they paid a little more money over there. I worked the standard knit mill for a while. And um, Ashes, Ashes was uh, paying paying better better money on in, in, in the sweatshops and and any place else. That that mayor down there right here now we got in Austin. Yeah. His people was running uh, the standard net mill out really? there. Really? Yeah. And uh, they were they were, they were paying pretty good. They were paying eighteen eighteen dollars and eighty five cents a week out there, and we were making ten forty four at Brookside. Okay. I they would. Well, they wasn't uh, they wasn't a living wage in the in the in the, in the cotton mill, and uh, in the cotton mill uh, back then it wasn't a living wage. You couldn't live on it. Uh, if what you done was uh, that's what you can call a sweatshop. You just sweated it out. Yeah. Now, if what did you think of President Roosevelt? Roosevelt, well, Roosevelt worked on Thurrys now. If he'd worked on anywhere else except Thurrys. Uh, it'd been all right. Uh, Thurry, Thurry's good. Now, a college professor is a Thurry man. They work on Thurry's. And uh, when the, uh, President Roosevelt, yeah, well, he, uh, the he, NRA. he tried. He done his, done his darn best up there. He, 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 he sweated a whole lot up there. But he worked on Thurry's all together. Worked and on what? On Thurry's. A Thurry. Oh, you know what a Thurry is? I think it'll work. We'll try a Thurry here and we'll try a Thurry there. Uh, he, he he had a lot a lot of things there that was pretty good. He had some things unconstitutional there. That blue eagle was was unconstitutional. Why? Well, I don't know. It was uh, telling the people too much there. You see that uh, when you get the Supreme Court throwed it out, and uh, they they done away with the blue eagle there. But what did the uh, NRA do for you and the co and the cotton mill industry? With the cotton mill? Yeah. Oh. Uh, 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 he had a, 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 the idea there that he's going to pay so much, and and he he did. He he had a thirty thirty cents an hour there. And that was a starting wages. Well, I started Brooks out of where nineteen cents an hour, and I'm going to school a half a day. Now, uh, yeah. If if they raised wages by fifteen cents an hour, right? Yeah. And they gave a minimum wage. Yeah. And you were working eight hours instead of ten That's hours. Two dollars and forty cents a day. That was twelve bucks a week. Right. Yeah. Now, why did people decide to strike? And why, if, if. Why did they decide to try to strike, strike on them? Well, why did they even? Why did they? Well, two things. Because you what you're up against now. You didn't have no twelve, twelve dollars a week when we struck. See, Lucille, I don't know whether she knows what she's talking about or not, but that's. The thirty cents an hour coming there after nineteen thirty five. Yeah, nineteen thirty five. Because he couldn't get Congress to go along with him now, a lot of things. Now he had some trouble just the same as uh, they having some trouble up there. Uh, you see we never have had a president in there now like they've got up there now. We never have had that before. We had a parallel war, a couple of parallel wars over there. You shoot at me and I'll shoot at you. You still got through Congress, yeah. Yeah, and nineteen thirty three or four. Right. Yeah. Right. But now, we, we come we come out on strike there in nineteen thirty three we did. Thirty four. Yeah, yeah. And thirty four we was out again on a strike. We was trying to come in there and Roosevelt said put him back to work and he called the strike off and he said put him back to work. Oh well, he he was right there in a way. Because times was picking up, uh, they they got a big order down there from Fluid Peabody, a big order down there. I understand that yeah. that Gorman called but, off the strike, and President Roosevelt promised that everybody would be able to get their jobs back. Yeah, he said that put them back to work without discrimination. Right. Well, they didn't, they didn't they didn't do that. They they crawfished on him. When I was blackball, Lucy was blackball. She couldn't go to work back down there. Jimmy Monroe was blackballed. He couldn't go back to work down there. Jimmy, did she, she mention Jimmy Monroe? She did. Well, he, he was another one. That's Cecil. That was a brother of mine, Cecil, the oldest brother. He he didn't he didn't get to go back down there. He went to North Carolina over there, Swannanoa over there, and worked there. And then he went to 
uh, over to in Virginia. What's the name of that place over there? Uh, where? Hampton. Went over to Hampton, Virginia, over there, and stayed over there for about 25 or 30 years. He's working for uh, the Veterans Administration over there through the. Um, Is he there now? They, they all done that. Listen, the people that got blackballed down there had done a lot better of standing on their own and in better shape than they, they was at scab on us down there. I, I didn't. I didn't do too bad. I don't think I've done too bad. Uh, I've been retired for 19 years. I had a pretty good sized family. I had seven kids. It's about 25 or 30 grandchildren. I don't know how many great grandchildren. We kept kept count there for them for a while, but we lost track, didn't we, Sue? Uh, you, you got something to go on. You can fight now. You see, uh, uh, it's, it's not like it was back then. You went up there and you got to say a slab of meat. That skin was a lot of lard front over it. You never, you never see a streak streaking that meat back then. Uh, well, but, uh, but as far as charity went, we didn't have no charity. Uh, the sack of flour that uh, come out of there, or stuff like that wasn't fit for dogs eating. Union man there, and they called me down to the hall, and I made a talk there in that hall at Appalachia, Virginia. They were trying to organize over in Harlan, Kentucky, across the mountain over there. Uh -huh. And I got up there and made that talk that night. What'd you say? And uh, I don't know. I said, but I got a pretty good hand before I left there, I'll tell you that now. And. Uh, now, could you talk to me about how you were a leader? in the organization at Cherokee Mill for that kind of mill. How did you get things started at Cherokee Mill? How, how did I get started down there at Cherokee? How did you get started in the union down there? How did I get started in the union on that strike down there, that strike that I started that morning down there when we called that union in? When I told Bob that the dispute closing down, I said, you hear anything about closing down here at 10 o'clock this morning? That started right there. That was the daddy of it right there. And and we uh, got down there and we organized the union right there and, and, and we started to, uh, to accumulate just a little bit of money there. Uh, we we uh, no that the NRA was was a black it, it, it had it it took about two years to get that to, through Supreme Court up there. Okay. Yeah, but, but in uh, that uh, when yeah. you went on eight hours, yeah, and, that's when you started organizing. Yeah, uh, we started organizing there. That uh, that on that uh, uh, section seven eight. On, on that morning there, on the, on a Monday morning, that's when we started organizing there over there. We rented a hall on Tuesday. Tuesday we begin to organize our, our, our union there at that hall. Even had the spinning room out that time, uh, the next time. I mean, the spinning room didn't come out with a weave room, but we did close it. We closed the whole thing down. Uh, weave room comes. We was we was the first and struck in in in, in down at Cherokee Mill. Uh, the weave room, yeah, that was 1933. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Had a walk out in yeah, we just walked. That was a walkout. What it was? It was a strike. Walkout strike. What it was? We didn't have no union at that time. Oh. That's when we started. Oh. Uh, that's when we started. That's when we started organized. There. The next time we just we come out again. See, we come out on two strikes down there. Okay. Yeah. But that was uh, the second strike. The spinning room come out. Lucille Thornburg bunch come out there. Okay. So the and second when she strike come out, the general strike. Yeah. When she come out of there, you see, we had. Had them women on the picket line down there, and they started calling and and singing and stuff like that, and they was trying to show a lot of happiness there when there's a lot of sadness going on because some of us was worried then, and uh, we we had some worries. And, uh, people had had a family, had some worries, and uh, it it was one of them things. And, but but the more 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 family you had, the more guts you had. It just took a few more guts to get up there and fight it. When one of the boys come by there and I pulled him out of the car and he opened the door and I pulled him out of the car and a cop run up to me and he said, hey. Oh, that's okay. I said, he just jumped out on me there. I said, that's what was the matter with me. I said, he just didn't like me. And, and they, they let me go. 
1933 now. That was 1933 we had to walk out. And I asked Bob Williams, uh, follow me, I asked Bob Williams, I said, did you hear anything about walking out here at 10 o'clock? That was 6.15 that morning. We started work at 6 o'clock and quit at 2. So it was on eight-hour shifts. Now, why did you decide to walk out in 1933? Well, we decided to walk out to get more money. We just come out for more money, what we come out for. And, and we asked for 20 percent, and they offered us 10 percent. We took the 10 percent, so we get a little more money on the next raise. Okay. You see, the, the, uh, 10 percent on $10 would have been $11. So it had been $10, $11, and, 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 and 10 cents on the next, and we'd gain a dime there. A dime was a whole lot of money back then. A dime found about almost three boxes of matches. And we smoked pride of Reedville. And then you started organizing after the walkout? Yeah, after, after the second time, we second time, second strike, then we, the spinning room come out and we organized. Yeah. Okay. And you organized for a, how, for a year? Yeah. It, it, lasted, it lasted about a year down there. And then, then the big general strike yeah. came. Yeah. Right? Okay, then in 1934, the general strike came. Yeah, 1934, we come out on a strike again. So that was the third uh, yeah. strike? The general yeah. strike was the third that was, that was That was a nationwide strike. Okay. That's when Gorman called there. Right. said the nationwide. Okay. Gorman called that, and he said nationwide there. Okay. That was 34. Now. But the, we, we had two strikes down there ourselves. But that was a nationwide strike, so you see. Um, now, why did you have to? Why did you use strike tactics? Why did we strike like that? Yeah. Why in the uh, early? Why those two small strikes? Well, uh, they, uh, we 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 needed money. We needed money bad too. And uh, the money, what we come out of for? That's what we were working for, money. And we wasn't even getting underpaid. We was. We was getting way underpaid. We were earning more than we were getting. And uh, you can't you can't trust a sweatshop guy no place. Uh, yeah. uh, that's one thing you can't do. You can look up there. That's severe, severe now uh, under Cherokee management up there to go up there and check on it. Uh, it's 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 different altogether. They got I guess better working condition. They say they allow them to smoke on the mill now. Uh, I don't know whether they do or not. No. Think about them. Now, that was Cherokee Cotton Mill. They had the Nostra Spinning Company. They had the Appalachian Cotton Mill. They had the uh, 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 Ash Hoser Mill out there. And they had the Knox Knit Hoser Mill out there. And uh, the Hose Knitting Mill, there was the uh, Hose, uh, Hoser Mill, that uh, Hoser Mill there. And old Nostra Spinning Company down there. I worked at all of them, I did. I got it to maybe a week or two at the, I got down to Appalachia there. I had to quit Appalachia and I had to quit the standard out there on account of bleach. I couldn't stand that bleach, smelling that bleach. I, but, uh, I, I liked the standard that mill, fine. But uh, I liked to pay better. I would probably never left town if I could have worked at the standard that mill out there, but we, we left and went to Ohio up there. And they laid me out Brookside down there. Right? Before before I got enough money to ride the train up, I had to borrow some money to ride the train. It was $21. Uh, so I put in two weeks' notice or so, so two weeks there. But I laid mail for a day or two there. I had to keep me from, from going. Union to get organized. Uh, union to get organized. What did you do personally help organize? Oh, well, personally to organize, that's what I've done. I just now went through the history of it. That's now, the, did you all get out? And and yeah, we got, yeah, we, you uh, yeah, we got out and visited uh, to, from house to house and uh, around. And then we'd have corner meetings down there after night under, under street lights and stuff like that around the mill down there. And people would come up and we'd talk to them about it. And uh, we'd have just, just big gangs around under that light down there. We picked that thing 24 hours a day down there. We didn't we didn't uh, sit down and just go down our daytime to pick it. We we picked 24 hours a day. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now I understand that there was an injunction. Yeah, they. Out uh, against your yeah, union. they they filed an injunction there against me against me and and uh, Lucille and that bunch. Uh, Jimmy Monroe was on it. They was uh, and and two brothers of mine was on it. Uh, 
And what did that injunction do to your ability to organize? What happened with we that wasn't, injunction? We, we wasn't even supposed to cross that street to get over on the Cherokee side. We were supposed to stay on the side next to the Southern Cast Stone down there, or up there on the corner, plumb over away from there. We wasn't allowed to walk down that alley down there. So how did you respond to that? What did you do? Oh, well, we couldn't do anything except just stay stay away from there. Uh, stay away from uh, where they wouldn't put those in jail. You see, they could throw you in jail back then for that. Yeah, did and, someone uh, bring you the injunction and hand it to you in your hand? Well, uh, it would uh, it was so, so you in jail there, it would have cost around fifty dollars back then that got out. Around but fifty dollars. Who got yeah. the injunction served against them? Well, the jury key cotton mill did. But who did they give it to? Oh, they served it to that house. At the house, and yeah. They brought it to yeah, your they house? they come to my house to serve that. They have to come to your house to serve it. They can't serve it to you standing out on the street. Do they give it to yeah. you in your hand? Yeah, they read it to me. They handed me the the, the spaniard there. To what stay away, you, it was, uh, I handed it back to them. To see that uh, that was back, that was theirs. They, they wanted they can't, they, uh, if they come come to you, they can't come read, read through that screen door back there. You got to stand. They, they, they can't be anything between you and and, and that warrant. Right. Right. Yeah. So how did what did that hurt? How did that affect the strike? I said, well, that, that after it weakened us, it said the, the strike was weakened then. Because the leaders, the leaders of the strike, was the backbone of the strike. A strong leader is the backbone of any any strike or, or any any uh, in, industry. They are is a strong leader, and and we tried to be out. Well, I, I, I guess back back then, I guess I had more guts than any of them. I didn't care for big uncle or little uncle. It didn't matter to me. So what did you did you listen to that injunction? What did you do? Well, I, I stayed. I stayed on that side. I stayed over there on the other side. They couldn't do anything with me when I was in front of the Southern Cast Stone over there, up there in front of the largest restaurant. They couldn't do anything there because that was a public place there. Did you keep on talking union? Yeah, I talked union all the time. I did. It was it was a hundred percent union with me down there. Now. A little short guy was a Jew. Um, I can't think of his name. He was a reporter for the Knoxville News at that time. Uh, Knoxville News Sentinel. Uh, that's uh, that that come out of uh, come out of the east up there. Uh, Gorman's outfit. I guess Gorman's dead now. Yeah. Um. A lot of people I, I didn't like the strike, but they didn't uh, want to strike. They uh, voted not to. Yeah, well, they uh, what what happened there? There was so many people that uh, I thought uh, they'd been out of work so long. You see that bunch in Nashville down there broke our banks. Luke Lee and that bunch down there, uh, they 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 they, they sent us National Bank here and a wholesome bank. They busted them two banks, and that started they, right here, right right here in our own town. People were starving to death and had maybe ten or fifteen or twenty-five dollars in there, about a dollar a week, of saving it to buy them a home. Walk across the place, pick it down there to to, to 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 if I had to, I'd walk walk across there if I had to to get a hold of somebody on the other side to drag them out of there. That's the kind of way I'd cross the picket line. Just get a hold of a scab to drag it out. Uh, but uh, as far as me walking across the picket no, line, no, no. did you go to other mills? Yeah, well, to talk about the union yeah, I went to, mills yeah, well, the I went, I went to Standard Knit Mill out there and helped them two or three times out there at Standard Knit Mill out there when they was out on the strike, and because they helped us, they helped us money wise. Did we you? didn't have no money what you might say. But we went out there and walked the picket line with them. And uh, anybody else that wanted us to walk the picket line with, we would walk with this them. This is in yeah. 1934? Yeah. That's 1934. We, we done a lot of walking. Okay. Yeah, we done a lot of walking.
Yeah, that's, um, that fella, when I look at that scab there, a fella come out there at the house, I was living out there. That's, uh, that's when one of the girls was born, she was born July. He come out there, but they're going to kill me because I called him a scabby son of a bitch. And I said, I bet he, I said, no, I would stand just the way I left it down there. I said, if I call you that, you're that. Or in my book, you know, he was coming out there to kill me. Now, I have he's, he's, he's gone, I guess, now. But he, he come out, he made a strip out of my house out there. He just wanted to find out what I'd call him a scabby son of a bitch or not. Uh, I guess I was awful filthy talking back then about uh, a scab, but uh, it's, it's, it's just had to lay there. Now, why did, what did you think the Union would be able to do? Do what? What did you think the Union would do? Well, I, I didn't think the Union would do a whole lot. It was in the action of the, the, the members to do and right. the leaders to do. Right. The, 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 the officials in, in, in Washington over the union up there, they can't do anything locally down there except make a visit and a talk and give them a little bit more pep or something other. Maybe bring them a couple of hundred thousand dollars around if they got that much coming. So it could be helped out a whole lot. But what did, I mean, what did you think but, the idea of a union, why were you fighting for the union to be a charity? I'm fighting for the union to get better working conditions and more money and, and, and shorter hours if you get them. Yeah. So that 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 was the union uh, philosophy altogether. That was the motto there. We are uh, in the carpenter local. We tried to do just a little bit more work and a little better work, and that's the way we preached in all the locals. A union is supposed to be big. Uh, union union made material is supposed to be the best materials that are made because they work together. Now, did you? Tell me about the people that you were organizing. Were they frightened? Were they proud of themselves? What were they? Were these people? Well, we, we we had we had uh, radicals. Yes, we had radicals in the union, and uh, like probably like uh, uh, what's the name? It got killed. Uh, but uh, we had yeah, we had coal miners. We had radicals and coal miners too. I was in the, uh, up there in uh, Virginia when they was out on a strike up there one time, and uh, I was from back into Jewel Ridge back there. Now they 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 was really strong back through there because they they had good working conditions back there, and uh, Jewel Ridge was a clean clean cut place back there, and I guess the officials was for the union back there. Why? What made you? you know, have enough guts to risk things? Well, they, 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 they was, uh, they, they wasn't no radical uh, thoughts run through my mind on it. I was mad because I wasn't making a living. Uh, that, that's the main thing. If you're not making enough money for the labor you're putting out, uh, you're, you're going to get mad at It's a way of life. Way of the, oh, there's nobody really satisfied. Nobody's really satisfied with living. But now, a lot of people yeah. say that lint heads, you know, they'd work for anything and they couldn't fight back. Well, that, that, that's, that's, that's the thing. The thing about it, Terry, if you've got, to, if you've got a, 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 a root, uh, have you got a root there to where you can uh, get your roots fastened down, and then you can get these holes in the ground to where you got some push power, and you got you got a leadership there. And if you ain't got a leadership, you uh, out of luck. I don't care what a guy knows. Anybody, anybody uh, 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 that's got a college education, if he ain't got sense enough to sell it, you better take your salesmanship course to where you can sell what you've learned. And uh, you see, that's all, 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 everything I had was my labor, and that's what I was trying to do is sell my labor for the biggest price I could get out of it. Now, that's, that's, that was my philosophy all together, is to sell my labor there to them 
through the Union. And you got to go through something of there. And, it's, and then that's all we had back then was that Union. And we had pretty strong, we had pretty strong gang there for a while on our leaders. We had a good, strong, I mean, good, good and strong. And what broke it up? What broke it up? Yeah. Well, uh, greedy, greedy, just like the supermarkets over there. He became pass it up. They were going to raise it tomorrow. The price is going to come. But you pick it up and put it in the sack and take it over there. Leave that land there for so long. And it'll come down there to where you can afford it. Well, what? That's afraid of. They're afraid they would starve to death. They, 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 that was the only job they knew. The only job they knew was that job right there. And they were just afraid they'd starve to death. That's what they're afraid of. Why weren't you afraid? That I wasn't afraid of starving to death because a textile person, you can't starve one of them to death. I worked a textile mill back in them days. You couldn't starve one of them to death. But because he's on a nurse and been on a nurse ever since he was born. You just couldn't starve one of them to death because he, he was hungry all the time. A textile in the textile industry. So that that ought to that ought to cover the whole thing right there. Well, the strike was over, right? Yeah. When Gorman called off the strike at the end of September in 1934, some people, I mean, President Roosevelt said, if you went back to work, you'd get your job back. Well, some of them went back, and some of them stayed in there. We had some stayed in there. We had some people stayed in there that after I went in the plumbing business and the pump business, I sold them pump, I sold them two bathrooms, and I put the bathrooms in. You see what I mean? He was, I, I, I forgive the guy myself because he was paying for his home up there and he was afraid he'd lose his home. Well, if he lost that home, I'd never got them job probably. <laughs> now, I have a whole list of people here that were blacklisted, I think. That was, went back in there. No, I think these were the people that were locked out. Yeah, let me let me look at you real okay. care. It was Foots. You're a Foots Weaver? Yeah, I'm Foots Weaver. Yep. Yep, I'm the one. Foots, I have your picture right here. Danny. Look. Mm. Right there. Yep. So you and Lucille were the leaders. Wait a oh. How'd you get that? That was in the newspaper. Yeah, that was in the news thing. Next time you come back, Oh, of course. This is my brother there. That's Cecil. That's the oldest brother. Uh-huh. Well, it sure is Yeah, that's Foots. That's, that's Lucille right there. Yeah. She, yeah. she doesn't know that you're a lot. I mean, she... Wow. Yeah. Didn't she, she, Would you she, like to see Lucille again? Uh, you know, Foots, can I... That was right on the front page of the paper. And it shone out there like new money. My wife got sort of, sort of aggravated with that picture there. And she thought... She thought something out there, and they would, uh, honest to God, that was just straight across the board. That was part of my job. And how come me to be standing up there uh, talking to her at that, that, that minute when that light, when he hollered something other, and, and they placed that, I said, uh oh. And I told, I told Lucille, I said, that'll be in the paper. <laughs> now it says here, it says, crowds of good natured pickets are shown patrolling the front of Cherokee spinning mills in the above picture. Policeman Bill Wayland is shown at the extreme left of the picture, calmly watching the crowds to see that no violence occurs. Was there violence on the line? Violence? Well, violence? Uh, let's say a little bit. Just sort of warm. Uh, sort of warm. Now it says, Insight is Foots Weaver and pretty Miss Lucille Thornburg, two of the leaders of the Cherokee Strikers. 
Ms. Thornburg was recording secretary of the union, but for resigned. Were you there at that meeting when the members voted down the strike? Why didn't they want to strike? Oh, I was just trying to think uh, on some of that stuff right there you were reading. Um, now that's a mo moco, mo moto, or whatever his name is there, a mo motalker. He's a Jew, he was, a little short fellow. He's a pretty nice guy, mo motalk. I think he's still with the new Sentinel. He's still alive? Yeah, I think he's still with the news Sentinel. I'm not uh, uh, sure. What did he, what was his job? He was a reporter? Mo Motalk or something like that. Uh, it says, hello, uh, yeah. there's another view. Let me, let me see that just a minute. I can't believe it's on his foot. You know, I didn't even know that they had used that reference until I saw it then. That's Cecil there with his arms crossed. Now, that's just exactly like him. Show that picture of Lazy over there. Yeah, we saw the one of you. Uh, uh, show it to her now. Uh, that's just exactly like him. Old, oldest brother of mine. They were three of us down there, Elmer. And uh, uh, did Lucy tell you anything about Elmer? Why don't you tell me about Elmer? Uh, well, uh, Elmer was the youngest, and he was uh, uh, he was a textile maniac. He ended up over just at Brookside. Back during before the war over there, after he come back from North Carolina, he went to North Carolina. He was uh, went to the Port Cherokee. I mean, at Brookside over there, overseer over the. He was a boss boss weaver down there at, at, at Brookside, and then he went to Oak Ridge, and he retired out of Oak Ridge out there. Now he's a Union man, and I mean he's a really strong one. Yeah, Is he's a, still alive? Uh, he's so strong that he stinks. Wow. All three of them, maybe. Would you come? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to. <laughs> what? That don't favor Lucille. No, I think there's more of your daddy, actually. There might be more. Mm. Now, listen, I have a question. When you, when you got blacklisted, I almost I don't even need that. I mean, I know that we have so, we can get so much information. Yeah, it's pretty much Lucille Thornburg. Yeah, I ain't seen, seen her, no, I ain't, seen I, ain't, I ain't seen her since that strike. Why? Uh, well, I just hadn't had no uh, reason to get in contact with her at all. Um, did you, did you try? I've seen her, seen her on television a time or two back when she was um, down there on the... Um, uh, at the paper, she was with the union paper down there. And, now, it seems to me that um, a lot of people wrote letters to try yeah. and get your jobs back. You know? They well, yeah. Them. Well, there was a lot of them. There was a lot of them wanted their jobs back down there. And uh, I didn't want no job back down there. I, I was done with it. When I, when I come out of that last time, I didn't want to go back. I already had my eyes set to go into business for myself, and when I got when I got a thousand bucks built up there in the bank, and I thought I was I was going. Did you? And um, even though, but it never made you stop. I playing. made more money. I made more money last Friday. Made more money last Friday, and I did the first fifty years of my life. What happened last um, Friday? I didn't I sue. I made more money last Friday than I made. The first 50 years of my life. Just on one deal. Well, you know, what I didn't want to go back in the cotton mill. I got enough of it. I got plenty of it. But I had to go back in 37 down there to, at, at Brookside. I went to work down there and uh, the, the dolphin. I hadn't dolphed any in 25 years. Why did you have to go back? Well, I, did, I, I didn't have anything to do and I had these kids. These kids were in the baby home. Out there in the baby home, not her now, not not her. That's the baby he was born up here. She don't know nothing about hard times. That gal, don't. you know, she. Now, she's did you go to North Carolina with a lot of the other blacklisted mill workers? Yeah, I went went over there. Me and uh, uh, Belt Jones and then Austin Jones and, and uh, uh, Lee. I mean Elmer and Cecil. 
all all of us was over there. Where did you go in North Carolina? We went over there. Went over to work in the cotton mill. We Which did. one? At uh, Swan at um um oh what was the name of that town? I just said Swan? all ago. Well, any 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 anyway, it was yeah. over there at uh, uh, the other side of Reedville. It was. Um, it's Cecil went to Swan and Noah over there. You know where Swan and Noah is, don't you? Uh, it's across the mountain over there, down below Cherokee. Uh, if you ever been to Cherokee, North Carolina, North Carolina down to yeah. the Black Mountain, down to there. Well, now Cecil was over these hospitals. What he'd done in these last years, well, they wouldn't harm over Brookside, and they wouldn't harm over the Standard. They wouldn't harm none of them people that was down there. That was local. That's the reason why we went to North Carolina. We couldn't get a job in no place around Knoxville. Wow. And we went to North Carolina to get a job over there. And a lot of people, some people went to Texas? Yeah, well, what, what we thought, we thought we had to work in the cotton mill. We thought that that's the only job they would because that's what the job we started on. We started in the mill. That's, that was, uh, any other stuff, we thought we couldn't do it. But after we got broke out of that, then we found out we could do the other things. I didn't know I could finish concrete like that out there on that porch, but I finished it. I didn't know what to mean her could plaster, but we plastered that kitchen up there, and the plaster, the guy who was supposed to been with the plaster, come down to do the plaster work. He said, who did it? I said, me and her. <laughs> oh, he said, nah. I said, that's right. Uh, he said, it's a good job. Did a lot of the people here go to Utica, New York? Uh, that brother of mine, that brother of mine there, Cecil, he was in Utica, New York, working in that cotton mill up there. He went up there and worked for a while. And it, yeah. and did, are there any people you think that I would be able to find in Utica or North Carolina Well, I'll tell you what, Texas? my my mother's people was out of the Wendell bunch up there. You hear the Wendell Airs in New York? on the corner of Fifth Avenue and Broadway. Is that right? You got some of the biggest churches and the biggest buildings there are and that down no, 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 uh -huh. up there. Is we there spent any? money, we spent money and money and money trying to get in on that. Now, old Lady Bell over North Carolina, she got about three million dollars out of it. People go to, to Dell. Yeah. Where in Texas did people go to work in the cotton mill? Where they go to work in the cotton mill yeah, now? Texas. They know there's no cotton mills running around here now. Back in '34, when people went to other places. Well, yeah, they went. They went. Uh, some of them went to Chicago up there. Uh -huh. uh, we had one fellow come back here, by the name of Brown. He brought a boy back here. Clyde that worked. Brown? Yeah, uh, he the he was he he was an insurance. He he went into the insurance Women's business. Women's of the world. Yeah, he went into the insurance business. He did. Yeah. He was he was office up there at that in Sevierville. It was. He was, he was with the Elks, and he was selling Triple A too, he was. I have a couple of names here of people that came back after they went away, and some of those people... I know Leonard Knight, Le Leonard Jenkins, is he on there? Leonard Knight and Fred Turner? Yeah, that's the Turner, Turner boys down on Sutherland Avenue, the red-headed boys. That's uh, the... the, the, the What's her name up here? That owns be that he married. Uh, lives right up there on the left. He married one of them uh, um, sisters to the, to, the, to, the, to him. Uh, that boy got killed up there. The one left one run around yeah, with. What what the uh, Owens? Owens be yeah. Uh, Owens. Yeah. Is Fred Turner still around? He went uh, over to Lamington, What about uh, what about Larges? You got Larges on there? Um. Well, these are people that I think that are living here now. Hicks Lane. Remember Hicks Lane? Lane. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's that's been that's been back there sixty years, seventy years ago. Fifty-seven. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, I was born seven. 1907, I was, 
My mother died in 1934, she did. Uh, she fell and broke her neck down a pair of steps. Mm. Uh, um, what do you think, your father, you know, Foots, it's, there aren't that many people who I can find now who were really full-fledged leaders of their union and who can talk about it and are proud of it. And I am just tickled. <laughs> Well, I'll say one thing. I'll say one thing about you. You you can get down there. You've got the material there. You've got everything you need to do on the research you need to do. You've got a lifetime research right there. What, did you, you have real thoughts? Are you going to write a book, you No, say? sir. We're making a movie. You're making a movie of it. And we'd like to come back and photograph you and record you and possibly bring you and Lucille back together again. Okay, that was fine. Okay, that'll okay. be fine. In about two weeks? Yeah. I'll be out of town like that. For good? Not for a week. I'll be in town this week. And yeah. Then you, your, your daughter says you have some real thoughts about Roosevelt. Well, I, 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 I didn't have anything against Roosevelt. He was, I'll tell you what, I'm American. 100% American, whoever they put in up there on the majority counts, whether it be a Democrat or Republican, he's still my president. Still my president. And uh, that's what I say, I'm a minority. I'm, I'm just one, just one person. You are, you're just one person. Nobody else in the world like you, they even got thoughts like you. But it's interesting because a lot of people who have, who believe in the individual the way you do, they're yeah. against unions. Well, what made you think that the unions were going to be good for a southern textile workers? What, what you try to do, what you try to do, you try to do a union like you do in the church. You try to bring the people together. You try to get them under one mind there, under one subject. That's what you want to do is to get that subject. What's and the subject? Uh, the subject of the union there. If, you, if you're organizing, you want to get the subject of what you can do there with the union, under the union coverage there what all can be done with it. And it's, it's, it's like a book there. You take, uh, well, let's take a dictionary. You take a dictionary and say can. You get so many different symbols out of that can. Just see A-N, can. You get, get a holding place or a storage place, can. I can do this. And you just take that and so many things there, so many symbols there that just see A-N, can do. You see what I mean? It's that one symbol. Uh, if you if you sit if you sit there and say I can do it, and don't make effort to do anything. You ain't going to do that. You're going to keep uh, sitting there. But if you get up and make a move, and you you're putting in an action. Uh, that's what I like about what his name uh, 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 in the paper where uh, Peel. Peel, there's Peel, Peel, Peel had a piece in the paper, didn't he? Norman Vincent Peel. Yeah. He, 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 he had a driving power there. Don't say I can't do it, say I can do it. Is that what you were trying yeah, to do that's what, that's what I was trying to preach to them people down there. I was trying to soak it in their head there that we could do these things if we'd stick together. But if you just, just a house that's divided against itself will not stand. That's Bible. You've heard it preached, I guess. I don't know whether you, what your faith is there, but if, if you go to church, you've heard it preached. And it won't stand. A house divided itself cannot and, stand. And I guess uh, the, yeah. the mill owner was successful in dividing yeah. the house? Yeah. Well, that's, what, that's what, uh, what, uh, what I was up against down there. I was up against a divided house down there. I had some that wouldn't go along with me. Lucille was in the same shape I was in. She was working the spinning room, and I was working the weave room. Me and Jimmy Monroe was working the weave room. So Jimmy's you... dead. Jimmy's been dead for several years, and he was a nice old boy. And I think Austin Jones is dead. Austin was with us, and Belt Jones was with us, his brother. Uh, Jesse Brown was against us. Asbury Hill was against us. They stayed in the mill. They was moon fixers. Why were they against you? 
Well, they 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 lived down in the country. They had a big farm down there, down in Loudon, down in Loudon County, down there, down right of Lenoir City, down toward Nashville, down there. They had a big farm. I rode back and forth with them uh, when I was living down there, and uh, they, they got to run off and leave me, and I was missing a day's work, and I went and bought an automobile, and uh, going back and forth. That was 1932. Uh, um, but. Uh, you just, uh, if you just sit down and think, uh, you can, if uh, you ever get in, a, uh, get in a place by yourself and, and, and just get your mind working on one subject and, and try to work it out the best way you can, you got two sides to your brains up there. One side will and the other side won't. And uh, you can store so much on one side of that brain up there. And, and uh, the way I used to do when I was building houses, I could be a work and lay, lay off my work there when I first started. And while I was doing that job there, then I'd be laying off the next job over there while I was carrying this out here. I was working the other side of my brain. It, it, it didn't work like that. Yeah. I'm going to ask you one more question, and I'm going to go and give you a break. Um, I'm trying to, there's so many people that I've met that are afraid to speak about what they did. They're still frightened that the boss might come and get them. Even when they own their own mill house and they're 80 years old, they're still frightened to speak. They're still well, frightened even to admit that cotton mill people ever tried to to organize like this. What makes, why aren't you frightened? Why weren't you frightened back then? Well, uh, they, the, they, they, there's a weakness there. There's a weakness there. Uh, you take, um, that bunch right there, you're looking at you're looking at a bunch right there. You take that bunch right there. They 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 put put a nice looking people on. I mean, you know what I mean? They going out there and they they got clean clothes on and stuff. They're not lazy people. They 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 they're not trifling. But uh, they they were out there on the street. It's it's hot there. It's, it's, that's a hot day there. I mean, it was burning hot. And uh, you take them people right there. They got something other there uh, working on their minds. You can't tell. You can't tell by looking at that picture what all each each other's got working on their minds. But me and Lucille was standing there and talking. We was standing there someplace, uh, maybe down here at this gate, or maybe over here in front of this little restaurant. There was a restaurant over there, and there was a restaurant over here on the right side, right about where this guy's standing there. The restaurant over there, Miss Lodge run it, but. You take, uh, we, 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 we were talking, talking a uh, uh, strike there. What we were talking about, how can we get over this hump to get more money and to settle this strike? That's what we was talking about there, I imagine. And, uh, or maybe we was talking about some of the troubles there. Why weren't uh, you afraid? Yeah, what was, but, why uh, weren't you afraid to go against the cotton mill owners. Why weren't you afraid to go? Why weren't you afraid? Why were you? So, uh, how did you get the guts to say, "Yeah, I think the union's gonna." Well, I, uh, you you take uh, my dad. My dad, but it was four boys in the family, just four boys, no girls. And he was sort of a kind of guy that believed in working. He was raised up on Washington Pike and forty-acre farm up there. They built a big two-story house up there, and there was five, five or six girls, and there was two boys. All there was. The old man was an old Civil War veteran. He brought an old pension up there, a little pension, about thirty dollars a month, I guess. And he built that log cabin up there. They homesteaded that. And uh, have you ever heard of Weaversville, um, okay. California? That's on the upper upper end of it now. I believe that's where my my people where his brothers and all come from. Two of them got grounded over here. They was logging, taking a bunch of logs to, to Chattanooga. They was had big log rafts over there on the, if you've been across the old bridge there and, uh, up Gay Street since you've been here, that old bridge, not the new bridge. Yeah. Uh, now they got grounded right there below that old bridge between the two bridges there where they got grounded. Uh, there was two of them. And uh, the old man, the old man, I, 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 his name was Josh Weaver. That was Grandpa Weaver, my daddy's daddy. And there was one more, and I don't know where, where he was at, but 
Weaversville, California. It's right in the upper end up there in an old logging company. You were going to tell me something about your father. Do what? You were going to tell me about somehow you got your courage from your father. Well, I did. I did because he was a fighter and he, and he, he, he there wasn't anything too rough for him to do. He was just an old rough man, that's all there was to it. And uh, he'd wait till the 1st of August and go right up there and plant, right just about back of the house there, plant some tomato seed in the ground. He wouldn't go get the plants. He would take them seeds on the first day of August and plant them and have tomatoes for the frosting. And he'd have watermelons ripe on the 4th of July here. And uh, how did, how, well, so, all right, I guess I'll, I'll guess I'll we'll figure this out when I come back. <laughs> <laughs> when are you coming back? Well, uh, let's see, when are you going to be free? Sudan will be out of town July 28th through August 4th and August 11th mm -hmm, to August 18th. So between the 4th and the 11th would be the best time. Okay. We're going to be, we're going to come back between August 4th and August 11th. Did you, go to, did you go to Columbia University? Columbia University in New yeah. York? No, I went to New York we used to We used to play Columbia, uh, 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 Tennessee did. Uh-huh. I don't know, I'm, 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 a, I'm a football fan now. I like football. Do, do you think you were fighting? I mean, did, was there an were you fighting for justice for cotton mill workers? Yeah, yeah. Would you use that word justice? What to do one? Would you would you use the word justice for the cotton mill workers? Mm, no, I wouldn't. No, no, I don't think I would. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think there's any justice in the cotton mill. Were you fighting, Were you for, fighting justice? for justice for the cotton mill workers? Well, Is that what the any suggestion for? for cotton mill? Were you fighting for justice for the cotton mill worker? Why were you fighting so hard? Fighting. Why were you fighting the labor, the management so hard? I wasn't, I wasn't fighting no, 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 nobody. I was just down there on my rights. We had rights down there. That's what we call American rights. If you don't set... Yeah, uh, that's that's what I can't understand on what we got right now. Uh, take the kids right here. They tore up a nostril. You've been reading the newspaper about them. Well, I haven't been here. Uh, yeah, they they all shook up. But you take a happy kid, he'll learn more than he will tear him up. Take him out of his school and send him from across the way on and bust him over there. You're taking the pursuit of happiness away from him. Why do you like for somebody to take the pursuit of happiness away from you? Huh? He wouldn't like it. And I don't like it all. I just don't like it all. Uh, that kid, that kid there, he's, he's, he's backing up. He's not learning, he's backing up. They're backing him up. They think they're doing, they're doing something smart up there because they're getting big money and getting a name in the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Huh? As I'm packing up, can I take a look and see if you think of anybody still alive from there that I haven't Goldie Mabel. That's the boy on uh, that, that Rudy Cup there. I doffed with him the first in 1922 or 23 Cup. Uh, Are any of those people still alive that you know of, Daddy? Uh, no, not so far. You know who I yeah, saw Lawson, this morning? Pete and Mary Cup and Lou Cup and Leon Clevenger. Not all of them are dead. They are on. Lucille Connor and Fanny Connor are dead. Uh, Frank Bales are dead. He was a loom fixer down there. He's he, all good uh, he, 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 but You see, they, they had him black ball too. They had him yeah, black ball. Yeah, they had him black ball too. He, he, he wound up with a little uh, used. Uh, 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 furniture store down there on uh, Central Avenue, uh, or on Jackson Avenue. Uh, 
done much better for themselves. I was looking for something like Croft in there, but I don't see her. She was blackmailed out there. And Beecher Croft, he was blackmailed. See if you can find it on there, Croft. You know who I saw this morning? Yeah. I have regards to you from Homer Logsdon. Was that the blackmail there? Black she list. saw Homer Logsdon this morning. Huh? Homer Logsdon. She saw Homer Logsdon this morning. Oh, the devil. This morning? Yeah. Or is he? Does he know me? Yeah. He didn't? Yeah. Do you remember Homer Logsdon? He was 19 years old then. He 19. worked in the weave room. Yep. Oh. Um, and you know? That's L-A-W-S-O-N. L-O-G-S-D-O-N. L-A Langston. Logsdon. Yep. Logsdon. And you know who else is still around? Who? Uh, W.R. Willard Smith. Willie Smith. Yeah. Remember him? I remember Willie Smith now. About how old was he when he was down there? Oh, he was probably about 24, too. Working a cotton mill for $3.97 a week. Do you relate your emphysema to working in the cotton mill? Cotton mill for three ninety seven a week. Did the working in the cotton mill help you get emphysema? Yep. How? A lint. A lint of blind. You were just a kid when you started working in the cotton mill? No, I, uh, I uh, the last uh, the last four or five years I've worked around the cotton mill and I, and, I, and then and then uh, cigarettes I smoked cigarettes for seventy one years. Uh, I was smoking three three packs a day when I quit. How old were you when you started working the mill? Uh, I worked in the mill all together about six years. How old were you when you first started at Brookside? Fourteen years old. That's the reason I was saying. Uh, I was going to school a half a day. The teacher taught from the first through the twelfth. Now in one class? room, one room. Now is it, the, and, and some of them messed up there. Some of the boys died lawyers that she taught down there. How much education did you get? I got spiffed. I didn't do too bad, did I? Went barefoot as big as part of my life. That's the reason why my feet are big. I had plenty of room to grow them. And all when God was giving out feet, I was right at the head of the line. So I said, here I am. I must have been yeah. second in line. You had big feet too? She's got big feet. She wasn't born, she wasn't born little either. Oh, yeah. Is that why they call you Foots? And they called her Foots over at high school. Um, yeah, the principal say, ah, ah, here come Puts down the hall, just loud as he could. He just hollered. He, when he talked, he hollered at you. Your father didn't appreciate it either? Um, <laughs> I bet he didn't. And I'll never forget the time he come to New Orleans down there and brought his boy along, that boy of his. And, and we, was, we was there in the hotel, me and Paul sitting there in the hotel. He come in and brought that boy in. He pulled off his shoes and he said, my damn peach nearly killed me. And he says, you got any cold water here? I said, it's bathtub right in there. I said, go in there and run water on him. And he did. Him feet were sweating. Uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, Listen, did you ever stop being a union man? I ain't ever stopped doing one. Did you ever stop being a union man? No. Why not? Well, I don't know. Tell you the truth about it, I just don't know. And you bring it back memories there to where I'm trying to straighten out a living the second life then, a living back there. That's what you bring it back right now. Well, I want you to think about this so that when we come back, you even have fresher memories, okay? And um, I think it would be really wonderful to get you and Lucille together again. That might be real nice, the two of them could work together and remember yeah. together. Yeah. Well... They, uh, I don't know why they'd done it, but when she took me down to the hospital down there, uh, she said, I don't know. She said I didn't have a chance, what they told her. And um, 
They bring them nurses in now. They was going to university over there studying being nurses. And they'd be my nurse to one o'clock, and they'd come in there and tell me Did about you go the, the hospital because of the emphysema. Did they ever say you had a brown lung or brucellosis? You know, right. them nurses would come in there and ask me questions and stuff like that. I'd say, now you be sure. <laughs> and be sure your patient's awake at 1 o'clock to give him his medicine. And go back at 2 o'clock and make sure that patient's wide awake. Now, don't let him sleep, but tell him that when you leave the door, say so you get you some rest now. But be back in 3 and wake that lot patient up if he's asleep. Don't let him sleep. He's down here, that's your patient. And if you got a sleepy patient, you say you can see him as dead. <laughs> and you know, you know I had them believing stuff like that. <laughs> They'd come in there and say,